Listen. So there's been a Netflix recommendation that I've been getting so much, uh, and that's for this movie called Miracle and Cell Number 7. It's supposed to be so sad. It's like a challenge not to cry by the end of it. It's based on a true story that's been adapted several times. The original 2013 South Korean film ended up being one of the highest grossing movies in its country, so much so that there was an Indian remake from 2017 that got sued for copyright, claiming that they never asked permission to remake it. And the director for that was like, nah, we were in inspired by other movies, including this one. It's a shot for shot. There was also a legal one from the Philippines, another one in the works from Indonesia, and honestly, it's just a matter of time before America gets it, you know, and turns it into a franchise. Let me explain. So the main one I'm going to break down is the Turkish version that's on Netflix and is super popular with a couple of callbacks to the original South Korean one since there are some changes. So make sure you go watch it and see if you can make it through dry. Get back in there, Tia. <laughs> The movie begins in the present with a news report talking about 1984 being the last year the death penalty was executed, and then we realize that the movie takes place in 83. We follow Memo, a shepherd who lives with his daughter Ova and Nana, his grandma. They have their little calling card with Lingo Lingo, which actually comes from a popular song, and they're happy just selling candy apples on the street. Yet they're always being ridiculed in the town. <laughs> Yeah, that's 100% on the parents, as we shall see. In each version, the dad's always trying to get her a backpack, you know, be it the Sailor Moon one or the Heidi one, but that ain't the miracle that happens. One thing I did notice throughout some of these adaptations is how some countries play down the mental disability, which is interesting considering <laughs> To me, that's one of the biggest elements of the story because, you know, it's insane to think that now, today, oi, there are countries that are vehemently against abortions unless they detect a disability, you know, they consider them not worthy and the procedure is suddenly okay. So, you know, just imagine being back in the 80s. The chief's daughter ends up getting the only Heidi backpack and dude's already looking down on Memo as being inferior to him. So later on, when his girl's taunting Memo up a hill with the backpack and slips, you know he's using him as a scapegoat. Same thing goes for the 2013 one. Instead of sympathy in their interactions, it's always aggression and they accuse him of much, much more when he's found trying to give her CPR. <laughs> now look, I'm not saying that the perspective of the parents who just lost their daughter should be ignored. Of course not, but um, they do have predispositions, as we shall see. After coercing Memo and beating him up while interrogating him, beating him up while they're transferring him, and beating him up when he gets there, they stuff him into cell number seven, which at this point has no miracles, just sweaty old men. <laughs> In the group, we have the head honcho, who they all refer to as Skipper, who's able to get them whatever they want snuck in from the outside. But on the inside, he's having problems back home. Hafez is the religious leader of the group, helping them find redemption, kind of like Red from Shawshank. Yusef is the opposite of Dufresne, always seeing this crack on the wall as the tree where he gave up his loved ones and drowns him in guilt that he barely even moves from this one spot throughout the movie. Inside, there's also thieves, murderers, this guy who kidnapped a woman when she wouldn't marry him, this guy who stabs someone every winter so he has a warm place to stay. So really quickly, they, they realize Memo doesn't belong here. They see Memo helping birds take flight. They hear him cry out to his daughter in the courtyard, and it's once he saves Skipper from a rival gang member that they realize, yeah, th this guy wouldn't even hurt a bug. They sentence him to death and completely strip him of everything. You know, they rip his letters to his daughter when he sends them out. They don't want his family to see him, so the cell gathers together to make the title of the movie come true. Ulan. And so they, Zack and Cody, are in. Ooh, they almost had me. And then Nana passes from a heart attack. Y'all really got rid of the best character. 
I will say, there is a beautiful through line in the movie dealing uh, with mothers. O kitabı bilgi değildi. Rahmetli anam öyle söylerdi. Ne yalan söyleyeyim, anamdaki Müslümanlığa hiçbir kitapta rastlamadı. Ana haktır. Nana and even the teacher bring up the love Ova's received and how other kids don't get the same attention. You know, they just get stuff because their parents are too busy. Nana, before her death, even opens up to Ova, seeing her resilience and what she's gone through, and opens up about the truth of the world, including breaking the facade of the seasonal birds going up to heaven because she knows Ova's about to face realities that no little girl should. Meanwhile, in America, parents get mad if you ruin Santa or the Tooth Fairy. That said, there's hope. There just so happens to be a runaway soldier who Memo noticed off in the abandoned ruins right when the incident happened. Ova finds him, but I mean, there's a reason why the guy dipped. If we've seen what the authorities have done so far by abusing their power, imagine what the guy who's worked for them has seen. And so it's the warden's turn to find justice. Bir soruşturmayalım mı? Ya ihtimal küçük bile olsa bir ihtimal. In the original, the teacher and the warden were kind of like combined since they also are the ones who adopt Ova when she's orphaned, but he's the one character with authority who has to make the decision to either seek justice or follow through with the commands he's given. And while he is in the position of power to help and bring in the one witness needed, he realizes the powers that be stretch farther than this one case. In the 2013 one, there's not really a witness. The commissioner just beats the hell out of the father and coerces a confession, going as far as threatening to kill his daughter if he didn't. Considering this man is a martial law commander, it reminds me of Toby Jones' character in First Cow, which you should see, First Cow, who sees punishment as a way to maximize your authority over people. When one factors the loss of labor from the punished hand, versus the gain of labor from those hands who witness the punishment, a stricter punishment can be the more advisable path. When it comes to the ending, each three vary a little bit. In the real incident, the man was charged in 72 and coerced to confess because it was a police officer's daughter. And while he wasn't sentenced to death, he was locked up and it took him until 2008 to get exonerated. In the 2013 adaptation, cell number seven tries to devise a plan to help him. Pretty much they build a hot air balloon for this man in order to help him escape, only for it to get entangled and the execution goes through. But like the flash forward intros that both have, we we see the daughter grown up, and in the 2013 version, she's seeking justice because she's become a lawyer who reopens her father's case in order to reverse the verdict and finally be able to find solace after all those years. The Turkish version, however, comes with a twist. Kendi kızına kıydıysan, başka çocukları kurtaracaksın. Instead of Memo being executed, they devise a plan to delay the commissioner, help Memo escape with his daughter by boat, as Yusef takes his spot, leaving behind his most treasured possession in order to amend for his past sins. Now, I know a lot of people probably skipped this movie because of the subs and uh, you know, I get it, it may have been too blurry to read them at certain points, but here are my suggestions for the American remake, right? One, it's gotta take place around the same time period too, not the present. In terms of casting, I'm throwing in Carl Urban to play Skipper, who ends up making amends with his own family by the end. I think Ova should be a newcomer, completely. But in terms of Memo, I think enough people have won Oscars for playing people with a disability, and it would be dope to see someone like Zack from Peanut Butter Falcon to play Memo, you know? Uh, there's a bunch of other people who could do it as well. You could do a casting call, but you know, my man already knows how to escape in a jiffy. Other than that, the one thing they better do justice to is the character of Nana. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, it is interesting to note that the original working title was December 23rd, in case that ends up being like one of the titles for another remake that's on the horizon. But um, it's also messed up because that's not only the day he gets sentenced, uh, but it's also the little girl's birthday. So there's a whole other level of nastiness there. But I'm curious to know your thoughts uh, in terms of the American remake, when I feel it, it is going to happen. There's two things. One, obviously it deals with the death penalty, which everyone has a very opinions on uh, and we do live in a really weird country 
a really weird country. But there's also the aspect of casting that America's going through right now because of all the prejudices that they have. And I think it's just going to be interesting because while I do like a lot of the actors who have played, yeah, I love my left foot, but it's a certain point where I always do wonder how directors are directing actors with their mannerisms or tics when they're playing like a mental or physical disability like are you just telling them to be act more mentally disabled like i've always felt like they play it like a costume so you know i think we are in a world where you could easily cast a bunch of other actors who do have the disability that they would be able to portray and portray it much better but i'm curious to see how that ends up going out um but i'm curious to know your thoughts on this one if you've seen any of the other versions let me know your thoughts on those the differences uh and other than that don't forget to comment like and subscribe and i'll send you a heidi backpack